I am happy to be with you this morning. We are going to take a small break from our study in the Minor Prophets, and next week we will pick up with the book of Nahum. But today we are going to be in Psalms, Psalm 121. Let us give our attention to the reading of God's Word. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are eternally grateful for your words. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would open our hearts, that we would receive from you, but ultimately that each and every life would be transformed. We thank you and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when I reflect at and on my life, there are things throughout my life that I needed to change and correct. And, and one of these issues that I needed to work on, and it's, and it's amazing because sometimes when I have an issue, it's because somebody else pointed it out in my life. Right? But this particular issue I've gotten a lot better with, and it only happens when I'm in the car. And I'm driving to a specific location. And all of a sudden, I think I know where I'm going. And all of a sudden, I find myself driving aimlessly because somewhere along the line, I got lost. Now, it would be always helpful for me to stop and ask for directions and ask for help. I used to think because I was Hispanic that, you know what, Puerto Ricans just don't stop and ask for help. <laughs> right? But then, I think some of you guys have the same issue too. Right? And, and again, this is an issue when I'm alone, I'm okay. It's only when someone is in the car with me, right? Because here's how I normally go to places, right? If I know that the place I need to go to is south of where I'm at, I tend to just travel south. And then somewhere along the line, something would remind me of where I'm heading and then I will narrow my choices, right? But I did that once, and I think I ended an hour and a half away from the place I needed to be at. Right? And, and I don't know what it is about pulling the car over, identifying an individual, and asking that individual for help. I, I need directions. Right? That even though I've gotten better, it is something still that gets in the way. The idea of asking for help. Looking to somebody else for guidance. Putting your time and sometimes your life in the hands of someone else. I don't know why we struggle, why I struggle with asking for help, for directions. But when I stop and think of my life in general... 
there are many different other places in my life where I have a hard time asking for somebody to step into my life and help me. Right? Because every time I allow somebody to help me, just like when you allow someone to help you, what you are doing is allowing that individual to bless you. And in reality, we as believers don't have a right to get in the way of somebody's blessing of you. Right? That sometimes happens when we give a gift and all of a sudden somebody feels bad because they don't have a gift to give back to you. As if they got to make it even. Right? There's nothing wrong in just receiving the gift. You know, but again, it's feels uncomfortable. But the idea of asking for help is woven through scriptures, especially the ones that we are looking at today, Psalm 121. Right? This is a, one of 15 psalms that are identified as psalms of ascent, the Aliyah in Hebrew. It is a psalm that designates that an individual is going up to Israel, that they are in pilgrimage, they are on a journey. It is a song that they would have sung as they are traveling. But this particular psalm is one of those psalms that many have prayed over family and friends and our kids as they gone to college or away in the military. It is almost like that prayer when we ask people, right, that they would pray for traveling mercies, that they would put a hedge of protection around our families as they are traveling. Psalm 121, when you list the number of psalms in reference from the top psalm to, let's say, the tenth psalm, right? This just falls shy of Psalm 23. It's almost even in reference to a psalm that most of us go to. Let us give our attention to God's word. Let's see. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come from as they were pilgriming to Israel they were all required three times a year to travel to Jerusalem to the temple the very place in which God had chosen to set his presence upon So as this group would travel to Israel, all of a sudden they would start to gaze of the hills in Judah. Now two things would happen at that moment. You can either find security in the hills or there's danger in the hills. Security because we see that in Psalm 11 where it says, be like a bird and flee to the mountains. Sometimes we go to the mountains for security. But then other times when bandits would know that the migration has started to go to Israel, they would hide within the mountains and terrorize those that were pilgriming to Israel. So imagine packing your family, knowing that these dangers are in front of you, and being willing because getting to Mount Zion was more important than anything that could happen to you. Now, you and I know, just like the Israelites knew, that as much as it was important to get to Israel, it doesn't mean that God was tethered there. 
Because God was with them also on the journey, like, just like he's with us in this journey. Because this particular psalm is also a reflection of your life and my life as we journey through the good times and the hard times, the difficult times. And as the individual looks to the hills of Judah, it's almost as if they look beyond the hills and they see God. And at that moment, he has a question. From where does my help come from? Maybe the help is to finish the journey. Even though this is called a psalm of ascent, right? In other words, we go up to Israel, and no matter where you are from a geographical location, if Israel is your final destination, you always go up to Israel. But when we read this psalm, we don't know if they're going or if they're going back home. Right? Because in verse 8 it says, he watches over your going or coming. So maybe they were already in Israel. Maybe they already received the blessings that they were supposed to receive in, in Israel. And now they're concerned about their trip back home. From where does my help come from? Right? And that's a question that applies to you and to me today. Right? Because here's my question to you. Are you in need of God's help today? And as you think of this question, here's what I'm going to ask of each and every one of you. Think about a very important issue in your life that right now, at this moment, you need God's help. It could be health. It could be a job, housing, family. In what area of your life do you need God to help you? Maybe it's a sin that you've been struggling over and over and over again. A sin that you think most people think it's a secret and nobody knows but God knows. And if you need a different way to look at this question, how can God help you right now? Some of us might have a list of things that we need God to help us with, right? But I need you to find the, the most important one that's in your life and have that in your mind. From where does my help come from? We'll come back to your issue. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. The very question that the psalmist has is answered. The God who made the heavens and the earth, the God who made everything, the God who knows. In other words, He is all-knowing. He is ever-present. He is all-powerful. The God who made everything. He is the God in which I look to to help me with my issue as I journey this life. As we pilgrimage. And sometimes the journey is easy and sometimes the journey is hard. And, and I know the older I get, the harder it gets. There's things in my body that ache. And I, and I, and I wake up, I go, I didn't do anything yesterday. <laughs> like, 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 why? Right? But, but it just does, right? It's a, it's a constant reminder that, that things are just a little bit older. But then the psalmist does an amazing thing. Right? He changes. These first two verses is in the first person. 
Right? In other words, he's presenting an issue. He has a problem. Just like we have an issue or a problem that we're looking for God to help us with. And then in verse 3, it changes to the second person. To you and yours. Almost as if he's talking to another person. And as I read different commentaries and just sat with this particular psalm all week, right, it's, I, I tend to want to say, right, that as the psalmist is presenting this issue, maybe he's having an internal dialogue with himself. You know, that self-talk, right? It's, have you ever talked to yourself? <laughs> right? Have, have, Right? Have, have you ever had yourself res- like respond back to you as, as, as you have issues and questions, right? Now, here, here's what's important when you talk to yourself, right? It's important that when you talk to yourself, you speak sense to yourself, right? And not nonsense, right? Because if we're not careful, we can lead ourselves off the trail that God has us on. And not only does he change the perspective in which this dialogue is happening, but he uses this word, keep, over and over again, seven times in Hebrew, shama, right? Which conveys that God guards us, he protects us, he's watching as we are journaling and and going through this life. That he's watching even though you haven't asked him to watch. That he is over you. Right? So we start with presenting an issue. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And now there's that shift. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. As you are on this journey back then, the roads were not as pretty as what we have today. No sidewalks, right? It was gravel. Sometimes those paths were wide, but as you went through the mountains and the valleys, those trails got very narrow. And the potential of your foot slipping were greater back then. But we have a God who makes sure that you have a firm footing. And according to Scripture, he doesn't slumber. Right? And in other words, he's not sleeping. He is paying attention to the very things that we need watching over, keeping over. As a matter of fact, he's a God that watches over you, 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 you. All of us, at the same time, the very thing that you and I need doesn't slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. So when Scripture in the Old Testament uses that word behold, it wants you to physically see with your eyes, to behold. This God, this Lord who keeps Israel would neither slumber or sleep. So there's that repetition, right? That he's alert. That he is supervising everything, right? Have you ever wondered sometimes when we're struggling with life, we ask the question internally, is is God even paying attention? Is is Doesn't God see that I'm going through this horrible time and he's not answering? Where is he? But Scripture is here to assure you and me that he is alert. He does not slumber. He does not sleep. Remember in the Old Testament with Elijah, with the battle of Mount Carmel? With the prophets of 
Baal. Right, so as the prophets were trying to alert their God, Baal, they were yelling, screaming. Eventually they started cutting themselves. And what is it that Elijah says? Maybe you need to make a little bit more noise because he might be sleeping. Maybe he doesn't hear you. And as Elijah taunts them, it's a reminder that our God is always alert. Our God is always paying attention. Our God is interested in your life and in my life. Our God is not dozing off, a little tired, where he needs to take a nap. And as he is present, he keeps you, he guards you, he protects you. He protects you because he is God. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. As we are reminded that he is the creator of heaven and earth, then we have these two celestial beings, right? The sun and the moon, almost as bookends. And what one of the commentators would say, Kidner, he would say, and the most important thing is the thing in the middle. You and me as we journey. Now living in the desert, the sun can be harmful for those that are walking through the desert. You know, when we go to Jerusalem, one of the things they tell us over and over and over again is make sure you drink a lot of water. Right? Because if you don't drink a lot of water... You're going to get heat stroke. And let me tell you, and when you're standing in Israel, you sweat, and you don't even know you're sweating. Right? Because the sweat just evaporates off your body. Right? And, and they tell you, drink water. And then the moon, right? It's, sometimes you, you, you hear these little statements that people say, right? Oh, it's a full moon. The loonies will be out tonight. Right? And back then, they thought that the moon impacted individuals. Right? It's, it's where we get lunatic from, from lunar. But even though these things are in place, they themselves will not come against you Come against me. Come against us as we journey through this life. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He who keeps your life. Right? And I know we hear these words, and then we ask ourselves the question, he keeps us from evil. Right? It's like, you know what? Things happen to us. People go out of their way to hurt us. Sometimes we even ask the question, Lord, where are you? I keep praying, and Lord, it's, your word says that you'll pile a heap of coal on their head, and it seems like they're just getting blessed over and over again. Right? And I think when we read these scriptures, we need to take a 10,000-foot view And really look at the entirety of the canon of Scripture. Right? So I'll give you a few examples. The story of Joseph. He has some brothers who are upset with Joseph in reference to the attention his father has given him. And they take him and they throw him into a pit naked. They pull him out. They sell him as a slave. He eventually ends up in Potiphar's house. His wife accuses him. He ends up in jail. Years later, he's standing before his brothers, and he would say to them, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. 
Right? Sometimes it's hard to see what God is doing in the midst of your journey and my journey. In Matthew 10, verse 28, it says, Don't be afraid of those who could kill the body but not the soul. At the beginning of Matthew, right, in the Beatitudes, blessed are those right, who will be persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. In the Gospel of Luke, it says that even he knows the hairs on your head, that they're numbered. Right? In, in other words, he is intricately woven into your life. But then in the context of when he says that, he says to the disciples, you will be persecuted. Right? And, and here's what Scripture wants to convey to you and to me, right? That if we put our faith and trust in this life, this life is going to disappoint us. But because of what Jesus Christ has done for you and for me, we have a different place to set our eyes upon. And that is an eternal home that it has nothing to do with what we experience here. Let me tell you, right? If it's our wealth, our health, or our family, if we put our faith and trust in those three things and we lose one of all of those things, we are in trouble. But if our faith and trust is in God, and even though we might lose some of those things, it, it's going to be painful but in Christ, we have a hope beyond this life. What does it say at the end of Romans 8, right? Nothing will ever separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, right? That means we will go through tribulation. Scripture doesn't hide it. It's there. We will go through tribulation. We will have issues. Every once in a while, life is good. But on this journey that God has us on, sometimes it's going to get difficult. Sometimes it's going to be hard. But even though we might go through the valley of shadow of death, right? Scripture says that we get to the other side because we have a shepherd who's leading and guiding us. And then he ends with, the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That the door, the, our Lord is watching over you, so as you're moving through life, he is watching you. He is with you. Just as the pilgrim started out their journey and they didn't know what they were going to meet, but God watched over them as they made it to Jerusalem, and as they came back home. I asked myself the question, right? It's like, did Jesus read these psalms? Right? I'm sure they were on the lips of Jesus. I, I, I would say that he probably knew all 150 of them. He actually knew the entire Old Testament. He knew... Right? And as he lived with the Psalms, I'm reminded of what you and I just experienced just a few weeks ago with Easter. But before Easter has to happen, the battle at Gethsemane has to happen. Right? And he would ask this question, Father, is there any other way? In other words, is there any other way that you, this congregation, can be saved? Is there any other way? But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And as I think of those words, and I think of that decision that was made that day, 
all of a sudden, all these other scriptures come to mind, right? That all that the Father has given you, none of them would be lost. That means that when we are taken home, every single seat that needs to be filled will be filled. Not a single seat will be empty. Not one will be lost. Because he is the one who keeps your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. From where does my help come from? Remember that question I asked you earlier? In reference to whatever issue you might have that you are asking God to help you with? You have that in your mind, right? So, so here's what I'm, I'm going to ask for each and every one of you to do, right? Because we are a body of believers, and if you are an unbeliever and you find yourself here this morning, then you know what? The power of God is going to be prayed over you. But whatever the issues are, because our God is a God who does not slumber or sleep, right? I want each and every one of you just to look at a person that's next to you, right? And as I pray for God to do a work, I want you to have that picture of that person in your mind and you pray for them, for the, for the things that they're lifting up for God. And my hope is that you will see God move as we, the church, become the church. So again, whether it's health issues, jobs, relationship issues, maybe you have a prodigal. Right? And you're just praying that God would bring them back home. Maybe you have a neighbor that just gets under your skin and, 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 and you just want them to move. And, and, and maybe God wants you to do a different work in their lives. Right? Whatever it is. Maybe you're struggling with a sin, right? And... and and you are ready just to give up on life because you just can't take it anymore. Maybe today is the day that we can look beyond the hills, right, and receive the very help that God has for us because the God in which we are praying to is the God who created the heavens and the earth. He is beyond our imagination to even comprehend and he is a God who loves you, and we see that love through his gift on the cross. Would you pray with me? Father, as we stand and sit here this morning, maybe we are home watching online, and, and they feel as if we haven't even identified or paid attention to them, but we know that you are out there and you're watching. And Lord, I pray for every one of these items in which we have identified. And, and I pray, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way. And Lord, and if it's a sin, I pray that you would break the back of sin. Lord, if it's provision, I pray that you would provide. Lord, if it's guidance, I pray that you would lead and guide us. If it's a word of encouragement, Lord, encourage us. As your word says, be the lifter of our heads. Lord, help us. Help us to believe this morning beyond our own human limitations that you are a God who keeps us, who guards us, who protects us, who wants the best for us so that we would be able to finish this journey as we step into our eternal home with you, our God, we thank you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, 
Amen and amen. Would you rise as we worship our God?